Good morning boys and girls! It is so awesome to see all of your amazing faces back in Children's Church for this morning. I hope you have an incredible Sunday. But now, let's all get up and get ready to worship.
and girls, I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys are excited for an exciting challenge church. But before we ca carry on, let us open in prayer. So close your eyes and bow your head. Father, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you bless each and every one of these little ones. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that as they go through challenge church, Lord God, let your wisdom be upon them, Lord God. Let them hear a lot, Father God. And I pray, Lord God, that you help bless their mommies and their daddies, Lord God, in your holy name. Amen. I hope you guys are excited. We have so much in store for you guys, and it's going to be really, really fun. Enjoy. Pharisees and teachers of the law from all over Galilee and Judea had gathered to hear what Jesus had to say. Large crowds had gathered to see Jesus too. Jesus went into a building to teach and everyone crowded around him and pushed to get in. Some men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat, hoping to bring him to see Jesus. But the crowds around the house were so large, they could not get their paralyzed friend inside. So they made their way up the stairs at the side of the building onto the flat roof. Flat roofs were often made of beams covered with reeds and layers of clay. The men started clawing into the clay to make a hole. Everyone in the building was surprised to see debris falling from the roof and a gap appearing above them. The men made an opening big enough to lower their friend to see Jesus. Jesus did not try to stop them. The paralyzed man was gently lowered into the crowded room. Everyone was watching, wondering what Jesus would do next. Jesus saw the faith of these men and their paralyzed friend and announced, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who's this man who speaks such blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk. Jesus then said to them, I want you to know, I have the authority on earth to forgive sins. Turning to the paralyzed man, Jesus commanded, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. To everyone's utter amazement, the man got to his feet and stood in front of them. People could hardly believe what they were seeing. The man picked up his mat and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They left saying, we have seen remarkable things today. Boys and girls, it's another fantastic week in Active Children's Church. Are you excited? I'm super excited to be with you again this week. And yes, we are continuing our sermon series on destroying the limitations. Yes, destroying the limitations. And this week we are looking at being free to move. Being free to move. Yes, being free to actually move. All right. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, we've just looked at the story okay, of Jesus healing a paralyzed man. What is a paralyzed man? Okay, it's a man who has probably, or a woman, someone who has um, been paralyzed, someone who's hurt their back, okay, and when they hurt their back, they are unable to walk, all right? Sometimes what happens is they get a disease or they get a tumor or they get something that causes them or maybe they've been in an accident and they cannot move, okay? So if they need to get somewhere, someone has to either carry them or they've got to drag themselves, okay? And they can't. They can't get to places easily, okay? It's horrible. It's almost like you are stuck. You are trapped. You are not able to move. Okay, now, I mean, touch your legs. Touch your legs right now. All right, what do you do? You move with your legs. You are free to move with your legs. Okay, so um, if you look at it, all right, we get something called physical paralysis, but there is also spiritual 
paralysis. And that is caused by a couple of things, all right? The one thing is sin, all right? Sin can stop us from doing and living out the life that God has created us for, all right? Sin stops us. Okay, we want to go and do things, but we actually can't because we are so stuck in our sin. Or God has planned for us to do things, but we are so stuck in our sin. All right. Or what happens is there's been a spiritual attack on your life. So you want to go out and you want to do things. You want to go out and preach the gospel, but then you get bullied at school. Or let's say, for example, you get teased, all right? Or you want to go into an area and you want to run a cell group and you can't because you are stopped. Maybe parents are holding you back from doing that which God has called you to do, all right? Now, the good news is that healing is available. And this healing is available through Jesus Christ. Now, remember, we looked at Two other examples of incredible faith. All right, boys and girls, can you remember the first one? The first one, yes, was blind Bartimaeus. All right, and we saw he had such amazing faith. All right, that he was like, he didn't care what anyone said to him. He ran. He was like, I want, I want Jesus. I want, like, like he, he was just so desperate for Jesus. All right, and he got to Jesus, and Jesus restored his sight. He got to see. Isn't that beautiful? And what was the second one we looked at last week? Spot on. I'm glad you were all listening. The second one was with the woman, yes, who had the issue of blood. What was the problem? Okay, she, she st- continued to bleed. And, and because she was continuing to bleed, she lost money. Because every time she had to go to a doctor, she had to pay. And people didn't want to touch her because she was unclean, remember? And then she reached out to Jesus and she got healed. Why? Because she had faith. But you know, there's something about today's story that is different. You see, the paralyzed man... And his friends went to Jesus. But it was his four friends that had faith for their friend who was paralyzed. Isn't that beautiful? You see, with Bartimaeus and the lady that had the issue of blood, they were believing for healing for themselves. Whereas this guy, his friends believed for healing for their friend. Isn't that beautiful? What an amazing example. All right. What an amazing example. But, you know, what was, what, what was amazing about these four guys? What do we see here? You know, it starts with Jesus. And what was the first thing Jesus was doing? He was preaching the word. He was preaching the word. Okay. They came to him. They came to hear from him. Okay. He did not preach. Jesus did not preach his opinion. What did he preach? He preached the word of God. You know, so many times we can tell people our opinions. Oh, I think you must do things this way. And you know what? Rather do it like this because, you know, I think it should be done like this. No, 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 boys and girls. We always need to help people with what the Bible says. How does the Bible say we must help them? You see, the Word of God is powerful. All right, our opinions are not powerful. They do not heal. The word of God heals in Jesus' name. Amen. And the second thing is the word, which is Jesus. It attracts people. All right. And why does it attract people? Because it is the truth. Wow. Isn't that amazing? All right, so if you look at it, Jesus goes into this house and immediately people are attracted to him. They gather to him. Why? Because they, he's coming to preach the truth to them. It's so beautiful. Okay, and you know what, boys and girls, when you are telling the truth, when you are preaching the truth, you will bring many people to church. And even in your house, okay, when you're running your cell group, Your house will be full of people. They will be attracted to you, all right? 
You know, if you look at it, they came to Him. They came to Him. All right? They were like, we're going to do this. Our friend is going to get healed today. All right? So the thing is, wherever you are, God has called you to preach the Word. All right? Jesus was in that house. He was preaching the Word of God. Okay? And God wants those that come to Him to come in faith, believing, expectant, knowing that He is going to move. All right? So what do we see about the four friends? Okay, and this is the fourth thing I want to tell you. We see that they worked together as a team. They were a dream team. You didn't have one guy carrying the stretcher. No, it needed a team to carry the stretcher. It was a team of four. One, two on that side, three, four on this side right? Okay. And they had the man in the center. So the thing is, all right, what do we see here? They had the same purpose. They had the same vision. All right. They knew what they, on their mind was like, we see Jesus healing our friend. They had the same thinking in Jesus' name. Amen. They weren't thinking about themselves. No, 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 no. They were thinking about their friend. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Okay, so no one could get near Jesus because of the crowd. Okay, Jesus was so popular. All right. And here he is in this home. Okay. And, you know, I want to say something to you. Not everyone that's in the crowd actually has faith. All right. There were a whole lot of Pharisees in there. And what were they doing? They were just criticizing. You see, people that have a religious spirit will, will, will criticize everything about Jesus. Oh, so you think Jesus um, can forgive sins? Uh, and that's going to heal you? Um, really? So, you know, the thing is, boys and girls, we've got to be so, so careful who we listen to. We've got to be so, so careful not to become like those Pharisees, okay? Now, what happened with these men? Back to the friends. What happened with these men? They broke through the roof, all right? Now, I want to explain something to you. If you look at this roof, all right, it was a flat roof, all right? And it was covered with reeds, all right? So they would weave the reeds, okay? So what they had to do is remove these mats, okay, that were making up the roof, right? And then lower their friend down. So what do we see? We see that they did something. The friends did something. Isn't that beautiful? All right, they did something. They acted, okay? They uncovered the roof, they went against tradition. They went against the norm. What is the norm? Is to enter the house through the door. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. We're bringing a friend through. Excuse me. Excuse me. We're bringing a friend through. I'm um, sorry. Sorry. That's the norm. But they did something different. They broke the norm. All right. You know, the thing is, they went against tradition. They went against the norm, all right? And what does Jesus say here? I mean, here they come down. Jesus sees this man and he says to him, Son, your sins are forgiven. The blood of redemption, boys and girls. The blood of redemption. That is the blood that was shed when Jesus was whipped. And he was whipped. So that, uh, that blood would heal every disease, every sickness in our lives. We know the Bible says by His stripes we are healed. Okay, this blood brings healing. This blood brings healing. All right. So when you serve Jesus, this is what happens to you. All right. What happens to you 
is you are forgiven. You are forgiven of all your sins. You are set free. You are healed. You are healed spiritually. Okay, you are healed and it's incredible. You are in line to receive incredible grace and mercy from the ever-living God. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. So, if you look at it, what did Jesus pray on the cross when they were beating him? When they were whipping him? What, what, did he, what did he pray after all this had happened and they were nailing him to the cross? They were making fun of his, his garment, casting lots for his garment. What did he say? He didn't go, oh, you guys, you're going to hell. He was like father. He prayed to the father. He was like, father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Father, forgive them. Have mercy on them, Lord. They are blind. They are paralyzed. They cannot see. They cannot move out of their sin. They are blind. So, you know, Jesus said to the Pharisees, it's easier for me to say, your sins are forgiven. And in that instant, Jesus actually said to him, get up, get up. Take your mat and walk. Get up, take your mat and walk. The grace of Jesus. He was no longer paralyzed. I want you to imagine this. This is an incredible miracle. The man couldn't walk. He couldn't move. It took four men to carry him from one place to the other. He could not move. It was hectic. So, um... The thing is, there does need to be repentance. Okay, sin, like I said earlier, paralyzes you. So we need to come before God and ask God to forgive us. All right? When we come to Him for forgiveness, we make a turnaround. Okay? In our lives. And we start doing things very differently. Okay? We turn our backs on our old life. All right? And we start a new life in Christ Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that amazing? But there needs to be repentance. There needs to be, Father, forgive me. And as a result, you will receive your healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So once you are free, you are forgiven. All right? Okay, and once you are forgiven, you will live the purpose that God has planned for your life. You are free. You are free to live exactly as God has created you to live. Amen. So where you are right now, I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. If Jesus has spoken to you today and you are like, Lord, I want to come back to you. I don't want to live this life anymore. I have been paralyzed in my sin for too long. Or Lord, rescue me out of the enemy, the enemy's hands that has held me back from fulfilling and doing exactly what you have called me to do. If that is you today, where you're at, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Okay, and I'm going to ask you by faith to repeat a prayer after me, okay, to believe with all your heart what you're about to pray right now. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for us. Jesus, thank you that your blood has washed me clean of all my sins. Today, I ask you to come into my life, to be the Lord and Savior of my life, to lead me, to guide me, to show me how you want me to live. Thank you for rescuing me 
out of the kingdom of darkness and bringing me into the kingdom of light, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. I thank you and I praise you in the mighty name of Jesus that I'm no longer a sinner, but from this moment, I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations, boys and girls. What an incredible decision you have made today. Your life will never be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So make sure that you speak to your leader in the church. Make sure that you tell them about this incredible decision you have made. And get into a cell group this week. Amen. Amen. Love you lots. So we are about to go into our closing activity. I'm sure you're super excited because these are the best. All right. So let's get into activity. Love you lots. Bye. Hi kids! In our activity today, we're going to be doing our bunnies. As you can see on my table, I have two paper plates. And then on my right hand, I have a scissor, I have my glue, I have my marker, I have my two highlighters, and I have a pencil. Remember, every time when you use a scissor, always I ask an older person to help me. So now, let's go. Okay, now I've got my eyes and my teeth. So now we're coming back to the ears. So we're gonna color our ears. You can use any color you want. Right now I'm gonna use my green. So now I've got my ears. So now we're going to do, we're gonna be putting our bunny together. So let's go. Now take your two. Now put your eyes. Put it like that. Now we're gonna have our nose. And now we're going to put our ears just like that. And there we have our bunny. I also made one for my friend. There we go. I hope you guys enjoy this activity with me. Bye bye. Really?